We use filters in Excel to narrow down data in a spreadsheet and temporarily hide unwanted data. Excel gives you many options when it comes to filtering your data. I don't want to pull down the drop-down list and select an option as we regularly do. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I'll show you three robust hacks to filter much faster and smarter. I call the three methods filter by selection, filter by formula, and a graphic filter. Along the way, I'll be using some amazing filtering shortcuts. So let's start the fun. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below the video. Filtering by selection simply means if I want to display the records for Jeff, I select Jeff and then I hit a shortcut and here you go. All the records are filtered and the row color turns blue, which means there is a filter applied. On the lower left side of the status bar, you see the number of records extracted. So I know that I applied a filter. If I want to extract the records for Jeff in the West region, then I select West and then I hit the same shortcut. And here you go, I have the records for Jeff in the West region. To release my filter, I hit the shortcut Control Shift L. Now, because you see my screen and you don't see my keyboard, let me tell you what I did. Look at that here at the top on the quick access toolbar. I have a special command called auto filter and auto filter is different than the filter command you see on the data tab. Let me show you how I bring this command and how I use it with a shortcut to apply a filter. To customize my quick access toolbar, I click on the down pointing arrow to the right side of the quick access toolbar and I select more commands. The Excel options dialog box opens and here I need to select the commands not in the ribbon. So I click on the drop list and then I select commands not in the ribbon. And here at the top of this list, I can see auto filter. I select it and I want to move it to my quick access toolbar by hitting add. I'm not going to do that because I already have it. All what you need to do is to recognize the order of this command in the list of commands. In my case, it's the fourth command in the list. It's number four in my list. Remember this number because I'm going to use it with a shortcut. When I hit OK, now I'm ready to apply the filter by selection. I want to see the records for Robert. I select Robert and then I hit Alt and 4. And here you go, I apply the filter. I want to see Robert in the East region. I select East, Alt 4 and I apply the filter. To release the filter, I hit the shortcut Control Shift L. I can use the same auto filter command with a comparison operator by typing a comparison operator preceding my condition. So if I would like to see the records where the sales amount is exceeding $7,000, I type greater than 7,000 and here you go, Alt 4, I filter the list to release the filter, Control Shift L. I could use it also for the date. So if I select the date, Control down arrow, I type the date I want the records after the 1st of January, 2015, I type the comparison operator preceding the date and Alt 4, here you go, I apply the filter, Control Shift L to release the filter. That was a filter by selection. Wasn't that fast? A filter by formula means if I have a condition in the name of the manager, Let's say I want to extract the records for Jeff and Chris. Then I want to create a formula that looks at the name of the manager. And whenever the name is either Jeff or Chris, whenever the name meets my condition, it returns it true. And this formula will run in memory. An advanced filter will run this formula in memory for each single record in my list. If the formula returns it true, that means the name exists in the list. That means the entire record will be extracted outside the list. And that's a great advantage of the filter by formula because it enables me to extract the records outside instead of messing up my original source list. Let me show you the formula first that returns a true when my condition is met and returns a false when my condition is not met. I'm going to create it here in a helper column Although I don't really need to do that, I'll tell you where do I create this formula for the advanced filter. So let me create a COUNTIF function. I'll be typing equal COUNTIF. 
and then I hit the tab key, I want to count. I'm selecting my conditions, and because I'm copying my formula down, I need to hit the F4 key to lock this range, and then I hit comma. Do we have in this record, under the name of the manager, do we have one of the two options? Then I close the bracket, and then I hit enter. If the name exists, it returns a one. If I copy this formula down, whenever the name exists, then it returns a one, which means whenever I have a one, I want to extract that record out. Whenever I have a zero, I want to skip that record. But in order to create an advanced filter, I need to convert the ones and zeros into trues and false. And that's very easy. I'm going to put my formula in the edit mode by hitting F2 and I type, is it equal one? And then I hit control enter to populate my formula. And I was able to create a list of trues and false, which means the name exists or not. Actually, I don't need this entire column because I need to create the formula once. And I did create this formula in cell A2. If you look at the formula bar, I have the same exact formula. Then I'm going to select this column, column F, and I hit the delete key on my keyboard. All what I need is this one. Let's see how we apply a filter by using a formula. And this formula will run in memory for each single record. It has the great advantage of extracting the records outside. In order to do that, I can go to the data tab and then click on advanced. Alternatively, I'm going to use the shortcut Alt AQ and the advanced filter dialog box opens. The advanced filter dialog box recognizes my list because I had one single cell selected in this list and the selection is correct. That's the list range. For the criteria range, I can delete the previous values and make a fresh selection. Look at that. I'm selecting the blank cell above and the cell having the formula. You need to select the blank cell above because it's the programmatic way by which Excel recognizes that we need to take this formula in memory and run it for each individual record. Whenever it returns a true, that means my condition is met and I need to take this record out. Although I could filter in place is one of the options, but the great advantage is to copy to another location. So I'm selecting copy to another location. I'm selecting my destination and here I'll be setting the destination cell G5. When I hit OK, all the records will be extracted based upon my condition. I have a count function here which counts the number of records extracted and it's dynamic. Of course, in a more advanced scenario, you can combine this functionality with a little macro and this little macro will delete the old condition. And whenever you change your condition here, you just click on an icon and it triggers the advanced filter one more time. Let me show you. If I change my condition, instead of Jeff, I select Robert. Instead of Chris, I select, let's say, Lisa. And with one single click, here are the records for Robert and Lisa. I have 134 records. I can use the filter by formula. In recognizing and extracting the records having formulas or constants, let me show you what I mean. If I click on the next sheet, here I have an extra column, the profit column. And in the profit column, if you look at the formula bar, is 25% of sales. But for some of the values, I hard coded some numbers. So let me create a formula. I created already a formula in cell A2, which says, is it a formula? Is what we have in column F, is it a formula? It will return a true or false. If it's a formula, well, I don't want to extract the formulas. I want to extract the constants. So I added not is formula, which means I included the is formula formula in a not formula and accordingly I'm going to create my advanced filter alt aq and in the advanced filter dialog box I need to set my condition in the criteria range I select the empty cell and the cell below it having the formula I want to extract my records out so I select copy to another location copy to I select a destination where I'll be extracting the records having constants instead of formula when I hit OK I have six records and the count function is dynamic. In this example I want to show you how to create a graphic interactive filter by using a slicer. Slicers are very common in pivot tables. They are also available when we have a table, but they do not work in lists. So with a slicer, I can filter all the records by clicking on East. I can select the records for a specific sales rep, Lisa. And here you go, that easily I was able to apply the filter. 
I can release the filter by using the shortcut Alt AC. And let me show you how did I create these slicers that look like tabs and control my list. I'm in the worksheet named three. I have the same exact list. I want to convert it to table. So I select a single cell and I use the popular shortcut Control T. T stands for table. And I was able to convert my list into a table by hitting enter. The next thing I would like to do is to go to the design tab of the ribbon and on the design tab, I would like to create a slicer. I want to create a slicer for the manager and region. So I click on insert slicer and here I'm going to check the region and check the manager. Where I hit OK, two slicers are created. We need to improve the appearance of these slicers. So I'm going to drag the first one region and I'm going to expand it so that it fills the entire width of my list. And on the options tab, I'm going to click to the right side where it says column and I want to split my single column into four columns so all my options appear side by side. The next thing I would like to do, it's clear that this is a region so I don't want to see this header so I'm going to right click and from the right click menu, I select slicer options and in the slicer options dialog box, I take the check away from display header and I check the box, hide items with no data and then I hit OK. I was able to improve the appearance of my first slicer. Let's repeat for the second one. Now that I have my two slicers formatted, I want them to look like tabs. I select the two of them by pressing the shift key and then I click on the down arrow for the slicer styles and I'll be selecting a dark style. My slicers look nice, but I want to get rid of this outer border. So I right click on the style that I just applied and select duplicate. For the new style, I want to give it a name. So let's say I'm going to name it Nabil and then I click on format and it opens the format slicer element. I don't want a border, so I click on border and select none and then hit OK and then other OK and I would have created a special style for me. Now I want to apply that style that I just created with the two slicers selected. The style, the custom style is here at the top and when I apply it, I would have created my nice slicer that look like tabs. Now I want to test my slicers. So if I select the north region, I see only the records for the north. If I select Robert, I see the records for Robert in the north region. If I want to release my filter, I use the shortcut Alt AC. Remember that the shortcut Control Shift L doesn't work in a table, it works just in a list. If you want to get rid of the down pointing arrow, then on the design tab, you take the check away from filter button. I showed you three different techniques for quickly applying a filter. You can apply a filter by selection by using a shortcut after adding the auto filter to the quick access toolbar. You can apply an advanced filter by using a formula that runs in memory. You can also convert your list into a table and use the slicer functionality to filter your data. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.